I have been using Golang for past three years, but I have never understood concurrency like I do it today. Every time my boss asked me to fix a concurrency issue, my response would be. <laughs> and after working with concurrency for so long, I have finally realized that if you do not understand these basic ten concepts about concurrency, you know nothing about concurrency. All right. Let's cut the chase and let's get started with the first concept. Concurrency is not equals to parallelism. The difference between concurrency and parallelism is kind of blurry for most people. Many developers use these terms interchangeably, but this is where you make the mistake. It's like calling a Figma design an actual app. Actually, I do that quite often to bluff investors. Anyways, concurrency is about dealing with multiple tasks at once. while parallelism is about executing multiple tasks simultaneously on multiple processor golang supports concurrency which can enable parallelism depending on the hardware and the runtime configuration take for example a chef preparing multiple dishes by working on one while other simmers this is concurrency the chef has multiple task in hand but he can put his attention in only one task at a time parallelism is actually executing multiple tasks simultaneously which means having multiple chefs each working on different dishes go's power comes from making concurrency easy and parallelism is a bonus that comes with the hardware configuration when i was a go noob i always assumed that adding more go routines in my program will ultimately make my program faster but sometimes it actually made things slower that was because i was confusing between concurrency and parallelism you see when you add more go routines in your program ultimately your runtime has to manage all these go routines and there is an overhead complexity in managing all this we will come to go's runtime scheduler later in this video but let's continue on our next point which is go routines this brings us to go routines if you are coming from languages like java or c sharp you might think oh go routines are just like threads but here is the catch i can launch 1 2 Three or even thousands of Go routines in a single program in my simple machine. While creating thousands of threads in Java would crash most systems, but Go can handle thousands or even millions of Go routines without breaking a sweat. Why? Because Go routines are managed by GoLang's runtime, not the operating system. And this is why most web servers in GoLang are designed in such a way. that each user connecting to the server creates its own go routine go routines work in a fork join model if you add go keyword in front of a function it is treated as a go routine this function during run time is run in a separate sub process i mean it forks off from the main run time when it is done executing it joins back to the main function but sometimes you need data running in one go routine into an another go routine If I have all these go routines running independently how do they communicate safely in java you have shared memory which makes implementation of concurrency slightly difficult while in golang you have channels you know every time i hear about the word channels it reminds me of the strict high school english teacher when she was in class the only person you can talk to was her and golang channels work the same way The only way to communicate between one go routine into another go routine is via channels only. Meanwhile, the Java threads with shared memory are like substitute teachers who just dump all the class supplies in the middle of the room and say, "Figure it out yourself." Before the class turns into a rugby match, channels. Channels are the secret sauce that makes Go concurrency model revolutionary. Channels are type safe by default. think of them as pipes where go routines can send and receive values what makes them special is that they are synchronized by design what took me long to understand though is that channels aren't just transferring data they are synchronizing go routines as well an unbuffered channel will block until both the sender and the receiver are ready it's like a synchronized handshake now you might be wondering what if i need to send multiple values without waiting That's where buffered channels come in. Using buffered channels where safety of synchronization is slightly off, be careful because using buffered channel is a quick fix for blocking issue, not an permanent one. It's like taking a painkiller without treating the underlying condition. Let me introduce to the CSP model. 
गोलैंग्स कंकरेंसी इज बेस्ड ऑन समथिंग कॉल्ड कम्युनिकेटिंग सिक्वेंशियल प्रोसेस और सी एस पी इट्स ए मैथमेटिकल मॉडल डेवलप्ड इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटीज बट गो ब्रॉट इट इन टू द मेन स्ट्रीम द कोर आइडिया इज रिवोल्यूशनरी डू नॉट कम्युनिकेट बाय शेयर्ड मेमरी शेयर मेमरी बाय कम्युनिकेटिंग दैट्स राइट इट फील्स अनयूजल फॉर ए मोमेंट बट इफ यू थिंक अबाउट इट फॉर अ सेकेंड इट एक्चुअली सॉल्व इशूज विद डेटा करप्शन एंड मेकिंग प्रोग्राम इजियर टू मैनेज which is why instead of shared memory we have channels carrying data from one go routine into another one in threading model of other languages you have shared memory between threads and use locks to prevent race conditions it's like having multiple people write on the same whiteboard you need strict rules about who can write and when which is why in traditional thread model there are locks that help prevent writing on the same memory by different threads at the same time go on the other hand flips this entire concept of shared memory instead of sharing memory using locks go routine communicates by passing message through channels it's like having each person work on their own whiteboard and passing notes when they need to share information this was a fresh perspective that changed everything for me Once I embraced this model my code become dramatically simpler and more reliable does that mean that you do not have control over synchronization because of channels what about those times when you explicitly need more traditional synchronization tool mutex and wait groups the manual synchronization tools while channels are powerful go provides additional synchronization primitives for specific scenario let me introduce you to wait groups Wait groups let you wait for multiple go routines to finish. I use this constantly for things like fan out and fan in patterns. Fan out and fan in are the most common concurrency patterns, but that's for another video. Let me know in the comments if you want to learn more about concurrency patterns in Golang. Mutexes on the other hand protect the shared resources from concurrent access. While channels are preferable when possible, sometimes you need direct synchronization. once in golang ensures if function runs exactly once even if it is called multiple times in the go routine perfect for initializing code and the select statement this is like a swiss army knife for golang select waits for multiple channel operations and executes whichever is ready first it's like having a receptionist who routes incoming calls to the first available operator At this point you might be feeling very excited because we cover these concepts in the simplest possible manner stick with me because understanding these concepts will transform how you think about concurrent programming next is deadlocks and blocking behavior one of the subtlest aspect of go concurrency is understanding blocking behavior this is where most developers get tripped up sending to an unbuffered channel blocks until another go routine receives the value receiving from an empty channel blocks until value is sent this sounds simple but it has a profound implication if all your go routines are blocked waiting for a channel operation you have a deadlock i learned this the hard way when my server suddenly froze under load after hours of debugging i discovered a circular dependency in my channel operations each go routine was waiting for another in a perfect circle problem is no one warns you about these things in tutorials and to save you some time i will compile all the possible deadlocks in golang in my future videos but let's move on to this video and understand the concepts of go concurrency what happens when things go wrong in concurrent code i mean how do you handle errors across multiple go routines this is where you need to learn error handling in concurrency error handling in concurrent program is notoriously tricky if a go routine encounters an error how do you propagate it back to the main flow there are two ways that you can do this either by error propagation or context cancellation the pattern i have found most effective is using dedicated error channels Each go routine sends either a result or an error and the main go routine collects the error and handles it. Another approach is using context cancellation. If one go routine encounters a fatal error, it can cancel the context that other go routines are monitoring, triggering a graceful shutdown. This brings us to the key question. How does Go manage all these go routines efficiently? Golang has an elegant way for this too. Runtime schedulers Go runtime includes a sophisticated scheduler that maintains and manages go routines. 
Understanding how it works will help you write efficient concurrent code. The scheduler uses a small number of OS threads and multiplexes goroutines into them. When a goroutine blocks an I.O., the scheduler moves the thread into an another goroutine, ensuring efficient use of resources. This is why Go can handle millions of goroutines in modest hardwares. But it also means that you need to be careful about blocking operations. If you are blocking a thread with compute intensive work, you are reducing the scheduler's ability to multiplex. So it's always a trade-off. Now that we understand the mechanism, let's talk about the best practices. After years of writing concurrent Go code, here are the practices that have saved me countless hours in debugging. Always prefer message passing via channels and avoid shared memory. Message passing via channels is what Golang promotes by default. Use buffered channels judiciously. They hide the back pressure issue. Your channel might be choked up with data and no goroutine is listening. Limit the number of active goroutines to avoid overwhelming the system resources. Design for cancellation. Every time you design a Go goroutine, make sure you pass the context and cancel the context when needed. And finally, remember that more concurrency does not always mean better performance. Benchmark and find the effective sweet spot. Using these best practices, I have seen code bases transform from hard to maintain messes to robust systems. But even with following best practices, concurrent code can be tricky to debug. So we will talk about concurrency tools in detail in the upcoming videos. But here are some quick glimpses. Go provide powerful tools to identify concurrency issues. The race detector, Go Run Race, is indispensable. It instruments your code to detect data races at runtime. I run it regularly during development as part of our CI pipeline. The pprof tool is another one which helps identify performance bottlenecks and go routine leaks. If your service is consuming more resources than expected, pprof will help you find the culprit. So there you have it, the 10 basic concepts of Go concurrency that you absolutely need to learn. Share your experience with Golang concurrency in the comment section below. If you found this video helpful, hit the subscribe button. Next week, I will be diving into advanced concurrency patterns like pipelines and fan in and fan out.